Hello everyone and welcome back to the Marketing Cloud API series. In this video, we will look at discovering the various REST API endpoints and specifically explore one that you may all find to be very useful at some point in time. Okay, And that is to retrieve data from a data extension using REST API. Okay, So first, let's look at the various REST API endpoints. Like, you know, the ones that you see in, in the Salesforce documentation, definitely, they are the documented ones. But then there's a lot more endpoints that are not documented. Right. So how do we find out what those endpoints are? Okay. So simple. It's like uh, you need to identify the base URL for each category that you want to discover. Okay. And then you add the rest keyword after that version. For example, uh, if you if you go and look at the documentation, you will find uh, for journeys like you know it is the uh, interaction slash v1 is the base URL. Okay. For uh, contacts, it will be like contact uh, contact slash v1. Uh, for uh, data, it is like data slash v1, etc. And there will be other uh, endpoint routes after that. So after that version number, you just have to append the rest keyword. So if you come to the documentation here under rest reference, you will see all the various categories here, like you know this address, assets. Uh, so if you come to campaigns, uh, you will see like it is slash hub slash v1 slash campaigns, right? So the base URL will be like you now after the tenant specific um, endpoint with the, the rest API you have to use slash hub slash v1 slash rest uh, instead of campaigns you just have to replace it with rest and you will get the undocumented apis which you will see shortly uh, through an example um, so let's say you want it for contacts like how do you know like okay what's the base url for contacts if you click on contacts you will see like you know it is slash contacts slash v1 so then after the v1 you just have to put uh, rest rest and then you will get the undocumented apis for that okay uh, similarly, for any of the other categories that you see here, like you know, for data, for even notifications, for interactions, uh, all those, like you know, you can try that out. So one main point to note is that Salesforce will only support the documented API endpoints, right? So even though the undocumented ones are available, uh, it's uh, recommended not to use them in critical business use cases, as we cannot be sure, like you know, if they would continue to work. Okay, so uh, you may use these like undocumented APIs temporarily or for any low risk scenarios that you have where even if it fails, it doesn't become a critical issue or you have some fail safe mechanisms in place. OK, Okay. so now let's try this out in Postman. Um, I've authenticated myself already um, like you know, using my install package and I already have a REST uh, token uh, which I'm passing in the header. Um, so here, like, you know, I have my uh, uh, subdomain that I've already added that uh, it's coming in from my environment variables. So as you saw here, um, what I said is after the, uh, the, uh, the REST API URL, you have to put in the base URL, uh, which is like whatever that base URL category is. Like if here it's for campaigns, it is hub slash v1 followed by the rest keyword. OK, so now if I go ahead and click send, you will see that this will list out all the different uh, endpoints that are available for uh, the hub uh, category. OK, that includes campaigns. So you will see get campaign, campaign collection. Some of these are documented. If you go back to your uh, documentation, you will see some of these are there, but some of them may not be there. Okay. For example, if I come into uh, here, if I click on uh, data, type data here, uh, and I click here, so you will see a lot of uh, endpoints over here. Like you know, so some of these are not uh, shown in in the documentation, and and how the documentation here works is like you know, you have to look at okay, what is this uh, uh, category? Uh, it will show you the path that you need to use. OK, so what, what you need to replace is with the rest instead of the rest keyword, you have to use this path here. So it will be data uh, v1 slash integration member Salesforce slash objects. OK, and, and this is like get fields for all uh, list of all Salesforce objects. Right. So there are different different um, uh, like you know, methods that are available here. The, the only problem is like there is no detailed documentation about this. So you have to do some guesswork to like, you know, the get ones probably might be simple because you probably don't have to like, you know, pass any payload. You might be able to get if it is working, you you might be able to get a, a reference, their response back uh, on those. Uh, if it's a post or like, you know, patch, uh, those kind of requests, you need a payload. So we probably might not be sure like, you know, what you need to pass unless you might want to do a get request first, see what are the parameters that are coming in. And then maybe you can try it out like you know, as a trial and error. But uh, th that is the problem with the undocumented APIs. The risk is that like, you know, there you don't find much of documentation. You can check Stack Exchange. Some some people have used it in the community before. So you might get some documentation about that. Um, so if you come across that and if you want to use it in any low risk scenario, you can definitely try that out. OK, so if I want to look at uh, the ones for journeys, I just have to change this to interactions 
for interaction and then if I send I will get all the different uh, the uh, API endpoints uh, for uh, journeys all interactions I will get that here uh, if I look at contacts then I will get all the contacts as well context and click on send you will see all the different uh, endpoints here now if if that particular endpoint doesn't work uh, it will give you a, a an error for example if i if i change this to contact um, because of some error that i did so it will show you 596 service not found okay so so it has to be like correct um, so unless then until if that endpoint is supported then you should get the response back correctly. Like some of these endpoints may not be supported anymore. Um, so you might come across that same error that you saw earlier. Um, so which means it is Salesforce does not support that even though it is showing up in the documentation, I mean in the response here, right? So use this carefully. Um, only if you want to do some uh, low risk scenarios or any any uh, you know experimentation, you just want to see like you know how to get that data maybe for a temporary scenario, you might be able to like you know use this, but don't, uh, I wouldn't recommend using it for any critical business scenarios. Okay, so now that you have seen um, how to find the undocumented APIs, let's see one in action. So many of you have come across this uh, sometime or the other where like, you know, the scenario where you wanted to like, you know, get data from a data extension through the REST API. Now it's very simple, uh, like you, know, you, would, you would expect like, you know, that definitely there would be a REST API. Uh, you would think there would be a REST API you know, to, to get uh, data from a data extension, but there is no documented one um, as of now. Um, like, you know, the only way that you can get it is through the SOAP API. But there is an undocumented REST API endpoint which we can use to retrieve data from a uh, from a data extension, okay? And it is under the data category here. Under data v1, uh, you would use custom object data key, and then you would have to use the external uh, key of that particular data extension followed by row set, okay? And then uh, you can use the filter keyword here, uh, the dollar filter in the in the query parameters, and you have multiple options like you can specify filter for the last name if you want it by email. Uh, if you have multiple filters like you know you can use the and uh, or the or keyword okay if you have um, like you know different search values that you want to like you know search within you can use the in keyword so there are different options that you can use using the filter keyword as well so this is how that example will look like um, the your subdomain uh, data v1 custom object data key and then the uh, the the de key that you have and uh, followed by the the query parameters here with the filter you can specify that and you will be able to get the data from that data extension. Now there is a limit of about uh, 2500, 2500 records that you will um, be able to get back. Uh, I would recommend that you don't uh, use this to pull in large amount of data, keep the data to a minimum, um, like for performance sakes. And I believe that's why they have that limit as well. So if you have like the, uh, the data extension with more than that, um, it, it will not retrieve that, right? So the example that I, we will be using has uh, 2600 records, which you will see shortly. It will only pull in the first 2500 records from there. So here is the uh, data extension that we will be actually working with uh, in this example. Um, so I'll be using this external key here in the, in the Postman request. And as you can see, there's 2600 records here. So based on uh, the uh, API endpoint, it will only bring in the first 2500, right? There's a limit to that. Uh, and then in the records, you will see like uh, I'm using data with um, different uh, fields here and emails. I have specified few records with a different email so that we can do some filtering. Uh, we will do by email. We will do by the title and the status as well. Okay. So let's look at the uh, Postman example. So here I've uh, again specified the uh, tenant specific endpoint. Uh, and like how we saw, we had the data V1 custom object data. Uh, and then uh, after the key, we have to specify the external key of the data extension. I have specified that here, row set. And then I'm using, if I don't use this filter, so let me take out this filter here. So if I do this um, send, it will get me the entire uh, you know set of uh, data that it can get, uh, which is the maximum is at 2500, that is the page size. So it, told, it tells me like, you know, that the count of records in that particular data extension is 2600, but it can only get me page fern which is 2,500 records, right? So there are additional uh, uh, more data that is available. As you can see here that it will give you the links if you want to go and get, uh, like if I use custom object. So for this request, for each request that you make, there you will get a request token. So this is that request token that you see here. Now using that token, you can go and get page one and page two. The page one should be 2,500 records. Page two should be uh, the remaining 100 records. That is how I expect it to work. 
uh, but uh, I did try this out um, as of now like you know, it is showing me that service not available error um, so I believe probably this endpoint is not supported anymore I will try to research and see like you know if that is being uh, we have any documentation on that in future and if there is I will update that in the video description okay but as of now um, we are not able to go and get this uh, second uh, page with the additional data so we are restricted to like you know having only up to 2500 records for now using this uh, primary uh, data endpoint okay so uh, that's why I try to keep it to like you know minimum amount of data that you want to bring in um, uh, like you know if it's large amount of data then again through APIs it is it is not recommended because of performance okay so in this particular case it's bringing all the uh, 2500 records that you see here now we'll go and apply a filter okay so let me go ahead and apply a filter here so if I apply and saying like okay, uh, show me all the uh, records in this data extension that has uh, this this particular email here now you will see that after Shibu I put like percentage 2b okay so first time I actually put the plus sign uh, as you saw in the data uh, it did not work so I had to like you know uh, encode it as to percentage 2b and then it actually works so some of you may be working with emails that are uh, in that particular format here like you see here the plus sign here so if you come across that scenario and then the filter that doesn't work uh, please go ahead and encode that and then uh, you should get it to work so main thing you need to notice you have to have that uh, quotes uh, otherwise it, the filter will not work okay and now uh, you have seen like okay this returns three records okay you will see that the count is three and then uh, you will see like okay the, all of these have the same email that i had set uh, in the filter okay and now you will see that we have status as active for two of those and then one is unsubscribed okay so now what if i want the uh, uh, e these three out of these three records i want the ones that are active so i have another uh, filter here which says give me status equals active as well so if you try to like you know use two uh, parameters like this okay so if you try to do the first dollar filter and the second one as well uh, it will only take the first one okay it will not combine the two together so if I now try to do the send, you will still see that, you know, it, it gives you back the, the three records. So the only the first filter was actually executed. The second one doesn't uh, isn't effective. Right. So how do I solve those two? So in that case, you have to have a single filter itself. And inside that you have to use the and keyword. OK, so the first part of the filter is like, you know, it says, OK, give me the email, which is the one that I specified and then followed by the and uh, keyword and then I am put the status uh, uh, the filter for status as well right so if I look at here you will see here and status equals active okay so now if I go ahead and click send I should get only those two records right so that's what you see here like right? only the active status is back now another example of the filter that you can use is the in keyword okay so uh, what I want to now try is like from the uh, set of data in the data extension, I want all the records that have the title with either VP marketing or account executive, right? So I can use the in keyword, okay? And then uh, within the brackets, I can give uh, in quotes, like, okay, give me the, the different titles that I want, okay? So let's go ahead and execute this. So this is given me back 55 records that actually match out of those 2,500 records. Um, so all of them have like you know, either VP marketing as the title or account executive, right? So if I scroll down, you will see like, you know, that is the, all the 55 records that have come back. So this is very, very useful. Like if you want to like, you know, uh, retrieve uh, data uh, using filters from the data extension that you have using the REST API. So I hope you got a brief idea about uh, documented and undocumented APIs and a useful one to retrieve uh, data extension data. But please do be careful when using these as there's no guarantee that, you know, Salesforce will support these or like, you know, when the uh, changes to the endpoints may happen or they might get uh, you know discontinued uh, at some point in time, right? So you can still try to experiment with uh, some of the endpoints that you can find out when you uh, try it um, and then like, you know, definitely post uh, your uh, sharings and learnings as well. Okay. Thank you for watching.